getting some of my socials pulled up here. Awesome, awesome. Hello, DJ MJR here bright and early for a very special Sunday Massive. So uh, this is uh, kind of two shows at once, uh, trying out this rack rescue thing. Uh, let's start with an opening jam, and then I will explain what's happening here. Uh, basically, uh, so Rack Rescue, I'll do it in the other order. Rack Rescue is something I've been doing on Discord for a bit, uh, where I'll take somebody's rack, usually one that's very large, and uh, I've been helping people as a bit of a consultant in uh, instrument design. Uh, you've seen me rocking out on Bashmu on this channel a lot, and... <clears throat> Like, Bashmu was very, very fine-tuned over a very long period of time, and uh, if, if you asked me if I had anything that I would feel comfortable uh, super gluing down, it's that machine right there. I play it live. Um, I only wouldn't super glue it down so that I could fix it if something went wrong. Uh, but uh, what I have here is actually a friend's rack uh, that they wanted a rack rescue on. Um, my friend here, uh, who is who is Loaf, uh, AKA Heavens, uh, looking up their band camp right now so I can plug them. But uh, my friend Loaf says, uh, I made a, uh, or I'm trying to make an all Hikari rack, and uh, they're just having trouble getting things that they like out of this all Hikari rack. Uh, they're not sure if it's how they're patching it, if it's just the way that it's arranged. Um, I can help with all of those things. And uh, as you can see, there's a bit of a blank space here where we can uh, still expand. Uh, we have this mini mix in the upper corner, which is not Hikari. Uh, so uh, their question is, uh, how can they proceed? They're thinking of uh, merging it with their ALM rack. But personally, I think we can do this with all Hikaris, uh, especially Hikari's been uh, releasing a couple new modules lately. And uh, pardon my voice, I'm getting over a bit of a cold here. There we go. Uh, so uh, if you want to check out uh, Loaf's stuff, um, they might be using the Hikari in the future. Uh, Loaf uh, is under a Heaven's Noise, exactly as it sounds. Uh, heaven's Noise uh, dot bandcamp dot com. Uh, but. Uh, they handed me this to see what uh, to see what I could do with it and uh, where where they could take it to maybe finish it off. So uh, here's a patch that I worked up last night and uh, looking forward to sharing it with you. Here we go. Just a moment. All right, and I think we can go ahead and get started. The, the party's in chat. Let's rock.
And there we go. <laughs> so, um, I think it's safe to say that uh, this rack currently has everything that you need to, uh, uh, as I put it last night in Discord, uh, this thing rips. Uh, so, I want to help Loaf um, achieve not techno, because they're not really a techno artist, but... Uh, they work uh, more like the stuff that I do on albums, actually. They're one of the few people that I would say is probably in the same genre as me. Uh, we do uh, soundscaping, textural stuff. While I am very influenced by the noise scene, <clears throat> and uh, when I started out, I was just trying to make noise music, and it turned into the Mother Desigan project. Um, uh, this stuff, uh, I've, the stuff that I see from Hikari, uh, Hikari, uh, I should mention there's a couple things in here that are no touchy. Um, <laughs> Loaf has mentioned that uh, these and these have got to stay because he uses it sometimes as a third sequencer. So I want to leave those there uh, for him. Um, if that's how he wants to do it, that's how he wants to do it. Uh, I don't, I'm not here to tell people how their instrument should speak to them. If they're finding things that are working for them, uh, th then keep it that way, especially when it's a clever use of a uh, an attenuator and an attenu mixer and a sequencer uh, that just does gates. So uh, th they've gotten a lot of use out of that. Um, their main complaints are that it doesn't really work for their music. They're not finding inspiring things, and uh, that music is mostly uh, textural and droning. And uh, one of the things that I wanted to mention is that you will notice... No VCAs. There's not a single VCA on this thing, and I admire that commitment to uh, to drone life and noise life. Uh, the, the volume never goes down. There's no VCAs on this. But the uh, when it comes to VCAs here, uh, let me go ahead and illustrate one thing that I noticed while patching it up, and that is this noise layer that I have going on. Um, I have this plugged into the mini mix at the moment. Uh, headphone users, please enjoy, and uh, that's that's not a joke. Um, because uh, this is in stereo. And right now I have the, uh, the Hikari Yuka rhythm um, passing it between two areas for like a staticky uh, sputtering effect. along to the Euclidean rhythm. And I was thinking that it would be very nice. Uh, there's a lot of unused noise output from the filters, and I will get to the filters here. But there's a lot of unused noise output from the filters, which can be used as uh, modulators, of course, but uh, they can also be used as noise hats or just... Uh, not in a techno uh, way, you can use those things as noise washers, stuff like this. And uh, I'm going to go ahead and turn the tempo way, way up here to illustrate something. Is this not anything that techno? Where's that noise coming from? Weird. Anyway, uh, you can get something textual coming out of here. In fact, I'm going to go ahead and uh, unplug what is the point of the moment. Oh, that's why I gotta go in. I gotta go into an LFO. I was wrong. It's not the YouTube rhythm. That's so strange. I plugged this all up last night. I was so tired. There we go. So you can get like a flapping, fluttering sort of sound here, which is definitely something that I would use uh, in in my sort of music. Almost like a cicada here, especially if you get like a second LFO plugged into the FM of this one. But, unfortunately, there's no way to 
stop the noise when it's not being oscillated, or even to like turn it down or something. Uh, it's I would just highly recommend a VCA in here. VCAs don't need to turn it off. VCAs are also useful. You got to remember for doing things such as uh, such as patching up a lot of LFOs. Obviously, you have two LFOs here. One of these is configured to be a uh, uh, I mean, <laughs> just an oscillator. Uh, the the LFOs in these are not tuned to uh, CV, uh, what's it called, uh, volt per octave, but that's fine. We don't need 12-tone even temperament where we're going with this. In fact, he described it to me as it's meant to be mostly human controllable. This is a musician uh, in, in, the, in the guide I'm writing. Uh, this is a musician rack. Uh, where it's something that's meant to be actively played. It doesn't play itself. But that said, you do want some automation. This is your rack. You do want some CV acting upon things because you only have two hands. And if you want something that sounds like this. Uh, swooping around and uh, swirling even in. And I see why he has the mini mix here uh, in soundscaping. The stereo field is so huge, it's so big in what you do when you want somebody to feel immersed or somebody can move from left to right, move around your head. The volume of it can also give an illusion of distance. Like uh, here, we're gonna get we're gonna get buzzed by a potato here. There it goes. And in order to make that happen automatically so that you can busy yourself doing other things, you absolutely 100% want a VCA so that you can have an LFO moving that cicada around. Uh, perhaps even uh, not using a, uh, perhaps even not using this LFO to move it left and right. A nice little text thing you have there. And it's, uh, it's a little less biased, but. So, yeah, that's, uh, that's my tip number one. VCA is going to open this up a lot. Um, I had another tip. But uh, I think I might, you might not need to do it, uh, but in order to test it, we're going to need to unpack the other tip. So let's unpack really quick and see properly what we're dealing with here underneath all of these tables. Oh, my, my cat has taken an interest in the speaker again. This is what happens when I send high frequency things to the speaker. By the way, Schmooster, that's what I was doing before on the screen. I had to move the cat away. Cat and Hikari. Uh, pet Free Studio. Anyway, uh, let's uh, go ahead and get some of this on patch. Uh, I just one more. Almost, I almost cursed, you almost got me. Freaking savage. Wonderful strangeness from Japan as as we would as we would all expect for, for those of us who grew up in the eighties and nineties. Continue to continue to see some of the best stuff in the world coming out of it. So let's unpatch this and uh, take a look at the capabilities of the system in being an atmospheric uh, drone device. 
And just so I don't have a lot of dead air here, I, I, I want to start talking about the duos. This is my first time working with the duos. But uh, if you know what a mono sounds like and you've heard my albums, uh, you would know that I have a mono on a lot of things. I don't think I've released a single album that doesn't have the mono on it somewhere. Uh, as a noise box, the Hikari Monos uh, criminally slept on. Uh, any noise fans watching? Uh, oh gosh, what's his name? Uh, Kazumoto Endo himself. Kazumoto, while you were out, Endo, which by the way I think is one of one of, if not the best noise albums of all time. It has such a wonderful sense of humor. Uh, it, it it never gets old. Like he really does something with noise there. But uh, Kazumoto Endo actually has a fantastic uh, video where he plugs a monos into uh, a massive pedal, I believe. And it uh, just kind of shows you how you can get a lot of harsh noise out of it. Um, I don't use it for harsh noise. I use it for the uh, some of the slower textures that are in it. If you're listening to one of my albums and you hear some something that sounds like space crickets, that's definitely the monos. But this is the duos. So... I want to call attention to the duos for a little bit. So these things are hard to describe, <laughs> both the monos and the duos. It can be a little difficult to describe these devices. So uh, let's get stuck into it real quick and let's just hear the duos for a minute. Oh yeah, headphone users, I'm so sorry. I should tell you to take them all. There's one every stream. So, you think it sounds like an oscillator, right? A noise is like an a lot to do lately about uh, like 9 volt emulation when the batteries are starting to go bad so that you can get that sagging sound but if you want something that sounds like oh my gosh did you hit it with a bat and, and it sounds that way it sounds that way the best way you can Reductive to call this a complex oscillator. It is a noise and texture machine. So any textual work that you do with this, I think it's fair to say, is going to rely on the duos to provide 50% of the work. So think about that. And this brings me to my second point. Uh, besides a VCA, what I think this would use, what this could really use for making some deeply textural work is a dedicated reverb, and the word dedicated is in there. Uh, something I want to highlight that uh, Loaf pointed out, I'm trying to remember which one. Uh, so one thing that Hakari likes to do, uh, which I can show off right now, One thing that Hikari likes to do is uh, they'll put jumpers on the bottom of something for determining the speed of stuff. Uh, for a, I can illustrate this right now with the uh, the, the the highest frequency of, uh, or let's just do the middle frequencies of the LFO. Uh, one of these LFOs is configured differently than the other. We have this one. And in uh, in a rack as experimental as this one, you would be forgiven for using such a such a snappy square wave for percussion. And uh, you, here, let me make the settings exactly the same uh, to illustrate. 
So uh, this is the other LFO with a different jumper. Uh, all settings exactly the same. There we go. Here we go. Oop, sorry about that. Let's turn it down low. So it, it kind of works. Uh, kind of works as a normal oscillator. And you don't really have a Volker octave here, but uh, once again, if you have a whole Atari rack, you're not thinking about Volker octave or what key you're in. Yeah. Once again, it would be great if I could make this beat. If I could just make this like a like a tone that I could play. But it's it's just on. It's always on. This thing get higher. Actually, hold on. I wonder if it does get higher. Let's try something. Try something exciting. It freezes. Let's see. I don't think we can do that though. running some raw oscillators into the audio and plug that into a filter. I take back what I said. There's a lot of opportunities here, but I feel like uh, uh, if, you're, uh, if you're going to continue down this path, Loaf, you got to spend a lot of time with this. You, you need to find all of the things that are hiding inside of the Hikari designs uh, and uh, really take advantage of every single one of them. Well, let's visit the, uh, let's visit the Hikari filter for a special piece of the This is the pain filter. Um, I, I didn't even need to get myself a pain filter, and honestly, after borrowing this, I've been considering, uh, getting one, because these things are amazing. Um, they have so many features, and also, I have a module called a boy, and I have a module called a boom shot, and so I need something for the pain. That's just how it is. But, Aside. Let's experiment with some textures. Now, uh, let's both 
explore. Uh, the other thing, which if I recall correctly, he has uh, he has one configured differently than the other, is the carpool delay. I could be wrong on this one, but um, I think one of the delays might be wired faster than the other one. Uh, but uh, as you all know, uh, if a delay is at high enough resonance and uh, moving at audio rate, you can get something approaching reverb. So what's the point? Dare I say, I think we're going to need something a little more predictable than this sounds going to actually get in the reader. Although it does sound textury. Try a trick that works on the monos really quickly. So we got a triple AD here. Uh, love these triple AD because uh, if you keep pinging them, they just kind of keep activating, and you can like juggle something. So if you have a uh, a gate pattern such as this one, in fact, let's go ahead and use it. Lock out going at a. And uh, this is something you were hearing in the uh, in, in the jam before. Wait a minute, wait a minute. On. No, that's not quite a VCK. It's close, but it's not quite a VCK. All right, 
away, you can see it lighting up. All I got left are the long cables, by the way. So. note here. Uh, so I, when I first found out everything that filters could do, I, I theorized about a system like this that just kind of has a large filter bank. And through pinging and resonance and just the features of a filter, it makes up most of the features. Um, I, I think that this idea is actually kind of great. It really brings out the character of the filter uh, as it is. Um, I say in my guide that if you're going to make a single manufacturer system, that's for collectors. Because unless you're really looking for a challenge, which you may be as a musician or composer, you're probably going to have a lot of trouble tackling with what a uh, given manufacturer is making. Um, I actually briefly considered making an intro one myself. Uh, back before they didn't have any mixers at all to speak of and that's what stopped me I'm just like well, there's no There's no mixers like what a combo breaker I'd have this whole big rack and then just something that is an intro Because uh, if you're doing it you're doing it for the aesthetic and again for that for your collection You, you want to have this full Hikari rack that you can show off to people and People ooh and ah, but at the end of the day if you're a musician, it's got to be playable, too. But we have a we have something that's a little like a VCA here. The only problem is, is even with three of them, I found in trying to build a patch that really incorporates all of the case together, I I'm just running out of filters because it's not just a filter. It's like an LPG, which can kind of function like a VCA if it's configured correctly. Uh, so it's our VCAs, it's our LPGs. Sorry, it's our, it's our VCAs, it's our LPGs, it's our filters, it's an oscillator, uh, it's a noise generator. At some point, you're going to run out of filters when they're pulling that much duty. And I, I, I admire that uh, there's three of them, but like even with three of them here, it's like, wish I had five. Now, I'm not saying that that's the answer here. Um, I think that getting an actual VCA in here, uh, uh, preferably a bank, I get a couple of VCAs in here so that you can really start messing with them. Uh, and uh, the other thing, but my second thing is to get a real reverb. So let's see, let me let's get back on topic here and uh, experiment with the reverb that the Akari delay can give us. Where are we, where are we, uh, where are we dropping? No, okay. In there. That is. And we're going to patch it into the delay now. feedback. I was wondering that. So there's two feedback controls on here. Uh, one feedback control feedbacks the channel to itself because it's a dual channel delay. Uh, we have that at maximum at the moment and I think the fastest speed. But it feedback. So these other ones, they are a feedback of A to B. These are feedback of B to A. 
And uh, they can be modulated. Let's try the other one and see if it's configured differently. I think I may have been mistaking these for the LFOs, but that's fine because uh, it it leads into the tip that I had, which is get a get a reverb in here and. Specifically, if I were to get really specific about it, if you want to keep that Hikari character, um, a spring reverb would probably do a lot of good. Uh, the tip top that this is in, I think it might have room for a small spring tank. Uh, get something with a long spring so that you can get those very, very long, very open textural reverbs that will confound sounds like this into a bit of a mush or slush. Uh, that can then be modulated behind the scenes and whatever's happening in the reverb will be reflected there. If you can bear to do it, I would suggest a digital reverb. And uh, again, I know, heresy, but uh, digital reverbs do interesting things with the sound that uh, a fully analog spring reverb just won't. And the, the opposite is true. Uh, you know, you get this like King Tubby a smacks on a uh, on a spring reverb and uh, that would also help build uh, textures uh, when you're playing this instrument uh, particularly with this feedbackable delay on there I'm gonna hear a little bit more this is actually kind of really kind of rocks It's a when he was describing it's hard to make it musical like there's tricks for it but it's a little difficult to make it musical uh he felt a little limited and constrained by the eight step sequences and uh i want to show off something that i think will work and we'll use yet another part of the hikari system that we have not yet in its entirety. So the next thing I want to point out are the uh, attenue mixers. I think that uh, with the analog sequencers and the attenue mixers, we might have an opportunity to create longer sequences. So first thing we'll need to do is uh, build a voice really fast. 
Uh, let me go ahead and turn the gates on. And let's use the ping filter for its namesake. I guess that would just be the clock signal, wouldn't it? Nice ping. Who lets bias low? Uh, to make for to make for some easier listening, let's let's throw that in a delay. Why not? I'm not even going to synchronize them uh, for maximum experimental output. But I do want this one to be and it's real nice. Hold on. Let me run this through another filter so we can take that uh, so we can take that, that, that. getting that uh, that, that crisp Let me see if a filter will help clean that up a little bit. Because these are actually really clever. They're four. I can't believe that they packed all this into this much space. Wow, we got, we got a load. I wanted to see if this does CV. If it mixes. Go 
don't know if it does. Interesting. I wonder if that's something you can toggle. Anyway, um, I think... So, uh, I, you know what? I can, I, can, I can illustrate this in another way. I can illustrate this in another way, but uh, my point remains the same. want the eight notes. The eight notes are getting repetitive. So, I do this on the subharmonicon a lot, and we're going to do a little hack here that's going to make it an interesting thing to do with a filter, at the very least. In fact, I want this clock to be even slower, so I'm going to manually clock it. Some sequencers have a have a defined upper limit, but very few have a defined lower limit. I'm going to have it, uh, to illustrate my point here, I'm going to have it uh, move between some very different EVs. Now you have a longer sequence. So in order to make this happen, uh, you'll generally want a logic section. And uh, you'll notice that they, uh, the, uh, the, the very, very keen-eyed may have noticed this uh, IntelliGel or hanging out here, which is great for gate operations, but what you really want is something that can handle a little bit more than that. Uh, several, uh, several modules exist which can do a couple uh, common operators and would give you a few more patching opportunities uh, as far as bouncing the CV off of each other. Uh, you don't just want ORs, you want XORs in a system like this. Uh, you're going to want things that add voltages that are coming from things that are, and, and that's what's occurring here, is we're adding these voltages together, so the slower sequence is uh, informing where the faster sequence starts in its trip around the world. And the, the fact that it's not synced in any way, shape, or form um, uh, really helps add to the randomization of it. If you wanted to perhaps get a four-bar phrase, uh, that could even be accomplished by, uh, uh, go ahead, putting your reset on step four, I think this is, of this, uh, step one, two, three, four. Catch up a phrase. If you did want something more musical. It's not bad, but it's not what I was. It's not what I was trying to show. But but, but that, that's still not bad. So what I want to do to this sequence now is I'm going to uh, only send a trigger from sequencer two. Oh, sorry, from this sequencer two to this sequencer two. This is sequencer one. We're only we're going to start sending just at the beginning of the phrase from sequencer one. Uh, over to sequencer two, and see how that changes this uh, this little ARPA. This is technically an ARP drill stream, EMS.
And there's your longer sequences. Obviously, you're not going to be uh, uh, you're not going to be teaching this thing to play uh, little steps um, anytime soon. This is not going to start belting out Ave Maria without a lot of planning. But uh, as far as getting a longer sequence here, you have uh, all that you need to make a longer sequence, and that is two sequences. There's also some, there's also an optional glide code. We're moving between those microtonal spaces a little slower. my part of the rack rescue and before I show off a cool trick that I found uh, that you can do with your Hikari equipment at home of course is the the three things that you're going to want to do well, uh, is love everything that you have going on here already uh, this is as far as I'm concerned a complete system for experimental techno I love everything about it but we got a little bit of space to fill I get the feeling that this would Kind of thrown in here. Uh, you are on the money here. One, get some logic in. Logic is going to allow you to take all of the CP and gates and start like bouncing it off of each other. Uh, second thing you're going to want is some reverb. Uh, get some like digital reverb in here and then you'll be able to smooth it out. Um, if, uh, if you want to have this rack be all Hikari, uh, I would say go ahead and use an off-board reverb. Uh, if you have like an Oto Bam flying around, uh, plug it through that. Um, I'm sure I'm sure it would be great. Uh, maybe uh, I have a, what's there, there's a there's a very generic module out there called a VLN. That's a I don't know what it stands for. Bravo Lima November is what it's called. It's a two HP thing that's just that ins and outs for line level. So uh, if you want to work in your your collection of pedals that I know you have because I visited to pick this up, um, if you want to plug it into your collection of pedals, which I think is a great idea, uh, grab a BLN. And I think when we were talking, we were discussing uh, that a, uh, an external interface might be in the future. Uh, I just want to say you're correct. Um, uh, get get your reverbs, get your fuzzes, uh, get all of your um, I can't remember the name of the other brand that you collect, but. Get those pedals in on the action for this, and uh, you'll be able to make some richer uh, for the unusual kind of music that we have. So that covers uh, get some more effects, believe it or not, and it, it's just because the, the delay winds up doing things that aren't delayed so much. The, the filters wind up doing things that aren't filters so much. And get some of that on there, get some logic, three, Oh man, get a VCA. Uh, would be nice. Uh, even even a small one. If it hurts you, you can get one of those dope for ones that doesn't even have any knobs, and you can just uh, use the uh, you can use the envelopes here, or maybe even your LFOs since it's grown uh, to move them around. Uh, let's see. As far as the mixer, I feel like you could have any mixer in the space. So if you're creating a little bit more space, uh, honestly, anything from just another, maybe using your Atenu mixers as your outs, if you can bear to part with the mini mix, or again, go off board with it, uh, because uh, I want to see this system become like a full Hikari system. Because oh man, I, I, I and I would love to visit again and uh, mess with the system a little more. It's so inspiring. But uh, we are, uh, yeah, we're going to run a little bit over, but I'm going to show you um, a cool effect that you may have seen already. Uh, but there's just some odd characteristics that happen when you have a couple of 
parties talking to each other that I want to show off. Uh, I found myself getting unusual percussion uh, when I started trying to patch this for techno, and I didn't know where it was coming from. And uh, I found out where it was coming from, and I was so pleasantly surprised. Uh, this was the moment that I thought to myself, "Wow, this 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 isn't this isn't a normal system." Um, so uh, let's get a, a, a gate pattern going here on our seat. I'm going to run this through the delay again. Get a band pass up a little bit. And uh, run it into our doubled stereo output. Macari's really got your face grip, don't they? Okay, so I'm going to keep this monotonous for a moment so that you can hear what this does. I'm plugging the time control into an LFO. So that's already interesting, but that's not the end of the patch. I guess this isn't a flying uh, bolt, but... Backable, uh, which I understand is uh, if how uh, Mr. Hikari himself uh, patches them. It was kind of how it's meant to be. Send this to the FM. There's those drum noises. Let me turn them off. Obviously, you can you can modulate your delays and get this sort of thing all the time uh, for textural work. But uh, I I gotta say the only other delay that's felt like this raw and analog about it would start modulating. little hard to even find one on sale so if you're looking for uh, something uh, it's it's not clockable I should mention that but if you're looking for something that has that very uh, analog sounding delay effects when you start modulating the uh, when you start modulating the
make this a feedback texture.